Welcome to the third unit of session one in the environmental policy class. Um, I will focus today on communication strategies that can be used to change behavior and to change lifestyles and to change uh, society at large. Um, different strategies have been introduced over time um, that vary from the persuasive strategies where we try to convince uh, people that they should change their behavior or to make them feel maybe uncomfortable with their current behavior, to plant a seed of dissonance, you might say, that might, might make them rethink how they behave and how they act, to the more um, maybe sometimes subtle uh, approaches that nudge people or using social marketing strategies to get people to change their lifestyles or to make different choices to the more interactive uh, approaches and more dialogue uh, is used and conversations are used, getting people engaged, getting them to talk, getting them to share ideas and kind of encourage each other to bring about change and to give feedback to each other, to the more co-creative strategies where different actors in society, different stakeholders work together in redesigning a neighborhood, for instance. Um, Let's start with the persuasive uh, approaches. Here it's really about trying to convince others that they should change their behavior. Here we have a kind of uh, a kind of a predetermined view uh, or an agreed upon view of what the most desirable behavior is or what is simply wrong behavior. There's little doubt or or controversy around littering, for instance, or dumping uh, toxins in rivers. Uh, it's a generally accepted that this behavior is is not cannot be tolerated and that we must do everything to get people to refrain from that behavior and to develop other behavior and then the persuasive strategies can be very helpful in doing that um, it leads to dissonance and a feeling of unease that might trigger a change in behavior here you have two examples of that um, the, the chips back on the ground have been altered a little bit to make people think a bit more about what kind of behavior they are displaying when they drop uh, these empty bags on the ground. They're lazy, they're selfish. Uh, if it works, it depends a lot on who you are and, and how you communicate this to people. Um, the nudging is really about making it easy for people to change their behavior, making it attractive. Um, and the way we design spaces can invite certain behavior. Here the example of the stairways that make music can, can tempt people to take the stairs rather than, than the, the escalator next to it. Uh, similarly, if you position uh, uh, healthier choices at eye level in grocery stores, people are kind of nudged into making those choices. Um, but if you ban junk food, for instance, it's not really nud nudging, it is really uh, um, persuading people to or, or to make it impossible to to display that behavior by not providing it but that's not really nudging um, here are more examples the urinals for instance um, at, at Schiphol Airport uh, for the men amongst you you may may know or recognize these urinals the fly there has been positioned there to to get people to aim so that they don't spill urine all over the place and it actually reduces splattering of urine by 80 percent research has shown so it's really to nudge people into a different behavior more responsible behavior on the right the cigarette butts um, this is not about trying to people get people to stop from smoking um, to stop smoking but it's really about getting them not to put their their uh, cigarette butts uh, on the ground and to, to tempt them, nudge them into getting rid of it more properly uh, here by uh, um, uh, making it uh, a kind of a quiz. Who's the best soccer player in the world? Is it Ronaldo or is it Messi? And you can kind of keep score and follow uh, what the smokers think. So it's it's a, it's a really a, an attempt to um, to tweak behavior to make it easy to make it to invite a kind of behavior that is considered responsible or desirable um, the social marketing is in a way it's taking advantage of all the techniques uh, 
that have been developed in marketing and commercial marketing to get people to buy things and to sell more stuff and products. Um, but this is marketing for, for a socially good purpose, a social aim. Um, so this is not focusing on, on, on financial gain, uh, but on in, in realizing a, so, a social good. Um, so here in the, in, 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 in the context of environmental quality, it's, it's about promoting general health, sound environmental behavior, raising awareness, inducing change in behavior, using social interaction between people. Um, here's an example um, where um, it's a called a campaign, Know Your Lemons. It's about breast cancer. And, and where, whereas uh, in this particular context, nudity was not allowed. They use lemons, different kinds of lemons, displaying different kinds of appearances of breast cancer and also benign forms and uh, so healthy and not damaging or not high risk forms. Um, so to help women recognize these different shapes and to help self-diagnose, but more importantly, to get in touch with each other, to get into a conversation about what to do, what not to do, and who to contact. So these kinds of campaigns can be highly effective. Um, and the more participatory pro approaches from social marketing to the more uh, in interactive approaches where people actually meet face to face, um, this is from Carbon Conversations, Klimaatgesprekken in Dutch, where people in neighborhoods who are interested already in, in, in exploring um, energy efficient ways of living or uh, carbon neutral ways of living or transitioning to alternative sources of energy, where they exchange experiences that they have, for instance, with solar energy, um, um, how they get them, where they purchase them, if they can buy them collectively, uh, what kind of results they have with the panels, uh, what they might do to improve performance. So in these kinds of circles, people kind of uh, encourage each other. Uh, they, they have a kind of peer-to-peer -peer feedback system um, and the experienced people can, can help uh, train or inform the less experienced people and it can build confidence in the community. And in that way, you get a more interactive, more emancipatory way of, of engaging people actively in coming up with more sustainable solutions. Um, one step further might be what you might call a co-creative social learning based approach um, where people don't know exactly in advance what the most sustainable way of living or the most sustainable neighborhood or school might look like, but they have a sense uh, of the kind of values that are underneath and together they come up or they design, co-create an imagery of a more sustainable neighborhood or school and invite different stakeholders with different expertise uh, that can help them generate such a uh, community, for instance. Here you see a community just south of Utrecht in Kulenborg and Eva Langsmeer, where it took about 20 years to co-create a sustainable neighborhood in terms of energy, in terms of water management, in terms of connecting with local food, a local city farmer, um, but also in terms of, uh, of having safe neighborhoods where children can play, where the cars are outside. So it's a very integral, holistic design where people need to provide input in, in shaping that community. We must also recognize that, uh, and we did this in the introduction, that there is also a lot of confusion sometimes about what the most desirable behavior is. And, and it is easier to have a more persuasive strategy when you know exactly what the right behavior is um, than when you do not know exactly what the most sustainable or the healthiest way of living is, where, where there is some ambiguity or confusion perhaps even around it. Um, it's good to have this in mind that there are different strategies uh, and each strategy, uh, some strategies are more appropriate when you have a lot of knowledge about what, what is needed, what the right behavior is. And in other situations where this is not the case, you need to really have input from different people to, to have more creative, more what we call reflexive ways of, of developing a more sustainable way of living. 
in this grid you see uh, two axes the, the horizontal axis is the participation axis with on the left where citizens do not have a lot of, of input in determining the goals um, and in, in deciding what kind of behavior is important uh, but it's done by experts or policymakers and on the right side uh, policymakers provide space for citizens to come up with their own ideas and then citizens have a lot of input so that's kind of the participation axis and vertically um, it is the goal axis where on top the goals are um, predetermined they're kind of fixed and at the bottom they're co-created self-determined by people in a particular context uh, trying to aim for a particular goal that they agree upon themselves then you get different quadrants with the upper left, the more instrumental quadrant where um, communication, nudging, marketing are used as tools to change behavior in a pre-decided uh, way, predetermined. And in the lower right, it is more a way to develop capacity to help people become competent and to, to give them uh, the power to make decisions by their own uh, where they together determine what the most sustainable way of living is. We call that emancipatory and that works well in the so-called wicked problems, whereas in the upper left it works well in the in the more simple problems. And the upper right is kind of a mix where citizens have some input in deciding how they will change their behavior, but the kind of behavior that is desired has already been agreed upon and decided by the government or by, by the authorities. Uh, so it's the same grid basically with on the upper left it's basically we oh, there's a lot we know we're quite sure about what needs to be done uh, and we must act now and we have the tools including maybe legal tools and economic tools and communication tools to change behavior in a particular way we have little doubt about that behavior and in the lower right uh, we, we agree that there's a lot we do not know but we do know that we must do something. We need to figure it out together because we cannot continue living the way we do at the moment. We call that the more emancipatory approach. Um, and here you have the same grid again with the examples we just uh, showed within the upper left, the more persuasive strategies, the social marketing might be more in the upper right where there is some participation and, and the women do participate in, in uh, discussions about what the most desirable behavior is, but there's also a lot of expert knowledge that comes in. And in the lower right, you have Ava Langsmeer, uh, the, the example of the sustainable neighborhood. Uh, where people need to uh, learn together and figure it out together where they use science and they use experts but they come in at, the re at their request answering their questions it's not driven by science it's not driven by policy it's driven by a more intrinsic desire to bring about change okay the take-home message here is we have different tools for changing environmental behavior from the more persuasive strategies and, and behavior change strategies where we know what the desirable behavior is which we call instrumental to the more emancipatory approaches where we do not know exactly what the most sustainable way of living is but we do know it's important to involve people to get them excited and connect it and get, give them some ownership and the capacities that they need to co-create a more sustainable way of living. In the next session, we'll talk about understanding human behavior, dissecting human behavior in a way so that we get a better sense of where to start if we are going to um, um, influence behavior. So understanding human behavior is a prerequisite for working with environmental communication. If you have questions about this uh, particular unit, go to the virtual classroom. I will try to answer your question as best as I can, but you can always send me an email as well.